Yo, what's up? Preach Christ to die, Chance. One of the toughest things as apologetics, as being a Christian, as being a believer, one of the toughest questions that we ever going to get, get into or try to answer is this question of suffering. I heard somebody come up with a great answer. You know what I'm saying? For me, I was like, wow. Because, you know, you always trying to... I try to look out for the hard questions. I try to go search for the hard questions. That's, that way, when the time comes, you could be prepared for an answer. So, you're not, you're, not, you're not surprised by nothing. Well, the question of suffering, like, why does this happen? Whatever it, that it may be. John Lennox, I heard him talking, and man, John Lennox said, uh, he said that you could be having a good time and somebody might be suffering and a kid might die. Or I think his niece had died, and he knew somebody else that died, and he said that the, the, the people were trying to get them away from God, right? Like, why would God do this? Why would God allow that to happen? And he said that, uh, you do no you do you do no help by telling those people that, right? You know what I'm saying? You telling those people where is God at a time like this? How is that bringing them any comfort? You're only hurting the situation, right? Because all you are doing is taking away the only hope that those people have. Unless you could come with something better than a living God that has created them and has purpose for their life and you have an afterlife. That is, this is not for nothing. But if you're coming from an atheist standpoint, this is it. And it's all for nothing. So you didn't add to this. You didn't help the situation at all. But what you did do is you made the situation worse. You took away the only hope that a person can have in a situation like this by telling them that there is no God. Because if there is no God, then there is no hope for anything, especially the afterlife, right? Right. But if there is a God, and we know that there is, then we know that this ain't the end. Like, it all makes sense, you know what I'm saying? Not saying that we it, we understand why it happened, but we know that we live in a fallen world. We know that God already told us that. We live in a fallen world. Crazy things are going to happen. The thing that comes with free will is people have free will to do evil. And, that, and, and, and what comes with that is people get hurt. And we understand that if you're in the gospel, if you're in the, if you're in the Bible, you understand that. But that doesn't make it easy when you're going through it, but it makes it to where, okay, you can comprehend things way better, right? Because you know that my worldview is so, it, it, it's solid. Even though you, you have the same pain as the next person, the hope. See, that's the thing with God, man. There's always hope. There's always hope that I know it's going bad right now. I know. But, bro, it could change in a second. I always hear people say, man, I never thought. I never thought this can happen. I never thought that can happen. And it's like, even about bad things, it's like, say, bro, I ain't never imagined that. Things could get this bad. Then why I can't change then? Because you're in a situation you're like, bro, I don't see this getting no better. But you never thought it can get that bad. So we know God can move. And if you're a believer and if you put time in with God, if you've been a believer for years, you know God can move. You have a relationship with God. Like I, I got saved in 1998. I'm 42. Man, I've been with, I think I was 20. You know what I'm saying? When I got saved. So I have a lot of experience with God that a lot of pain and, a lot, and all that does is it draws you to the Father. It draws you to Him because you know, you're like, He got me through this. Why would He turn His back on me now? He could have turned His back on me in 1998. Because, you see, sometimes we get, we think that uh, discipline or uh, for whatever reason, God will want us to go through a situation that he has left us. Especially young believers that haven't been through that much. You, 
they can get shook by their by by uh by a trial because they still in that honeymoon phase with God, right? Which is an amazing place to be. You never felt that close to God before in your life, so you like crazy bold for God. And you never think that you would ever come down from where you at right now. And you never will when it comes to you believing in God. You never will. But the thing is, you need to know that you believe in this. You need to know how deep your faith is. And that's where trials come in at. See, God allows you to go through trials. So you he knows. He already knows how much you have. It ain't so he can find out. Like, it ain't like, oh, well, God needs to know he can trust you. No, you need to know you can trust God. You need to know how big your God is. You need to know that no matter what, he will not turn his back on you. And that's where the growth comes from. You see, you go through something for whatever it is, and you're praying for it. And you don't see nothing. And you keep praying. You keep praying. And it, and, 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 and it goes for a long time. Sometimes years, a person that does not have true faith in God will bounce. A person that does not have true faith with God will bounce out and say, listen, he's not real. Because if he was real, I've been praying for years. And another person would be logical and say, well, you know, maybe so, but nah, not for a believer. Like, you don't know when, what God's doing. Because when you've been praying for years and all of a sudden you get that breakthrough, and it happened. And you know that, man, ain't no, no one else could do this but God. No one else could do this. It was impossible. It was done. Everyone has turned it back. Everyone has given up. We all almost lost hope. But just because you lose hope don't mean you lose your faith. I'm talking about you. Like the Bible says, if you, if you lose faith, he remains faithful. Meaning you know you believe in God, but you're like, I just don't believe this is going to happen. But I still believe in him. And when you see that come through, bam. You want to talk about 10 foot tall and bulletproof in the faith. But then comes another trial. And it grows from faith to faith. And that's how you, you get calluses in your faith. You, you know what I'm saying? You start getting hard. To where the thing that you would fall from earlier, you won't. And that's why you can, that's real faith without works. Faith without works is faith works. See, anybody can do a, a, a good deed and say, oh, I am of God. But not anybody can suffer and trust that God will get you through that for years, months. Not anybody can do that. A non-believer won't do that. They will not. And that's why it will separate. Trials separate real from fake. Because a, a, a fake believer, they gone, bro. They not going to stay around worshiping a God, trusting in a God that they really don't believe down deep. They might have the appearance of it, but it, just, it ain't going to happen. They're not going to stay that long. Trial will show you true or fake. And the thing is, if the real ones, the real believers, it builds your faith. And that's why you could tell the young Christians coming along like, look, I know it's painful. And you tell yourself that when you're going through it too. Like, look, reach back and think where you was when God found you, where you was when he came through that way, when he came through that way, when he came through all these other times in your life. So I tell that to believers to say that, man, listen, you keep your faith. Because if there's one thing that God, that, that Satan wants you to stop, is that trusting in God. And another thing he wants you to stop doing is getting in that word. Because listen, if you say, right, I believe in eternal salvation. I'm not saying, I'm not one of the people that say you that, that you can lose your salvation. I don't believe that. Either you saved or you not. Okay, you saved already. And if you're not reading, that's the next best thing because you can't go to hell. So Satan's like, let's discourage him. Let's discourage him and make him where he he becomes use, useless now. Because 
if you are a believer and you're not reading, then yeah, you going to heaven, but you you losing out on rewards and you you just useless because you're not helping no one. If you don't know the word of God, you can't help no one. And that's the next best thing for Satan. If your salvation is already secure, let's make you ignorant of the word of God. That way you can't help nobody. You just stuck in your own little Christian bubble to where you just praying and, and you talking to God yourself. If you even doing that. Chance, preach Christ or die later.